everybody and welcome to my sewing room. My name is Rosemary and this is Enchanting Rosemary Sewing and Embroidery. Okay, so Today I thought we would do a different little project. My granddaughter, Adelie, this is her picture, is graduating from high school this year. We're all really proud of her because she's worked really hard and is on her way to college. And she just passed her test to be a certified nurse's assistant. So I'm just really overjoyed. And one of the things she wants to do in her high school graduation is to wear a sash around her neck with her cap and gown that has... Um, kind of a Mexican attitude and so this is uh, some of the fabric we're actually going to sew into this sash and then I have some black broadcloth and then we're going to embroider some flowers on it and put her name on it and her graduation year and I think I'm going to sneak, sneak a little bible verse on the back of it whether she wants me to or not um, so the first thing I need to do is I need to go into my PE Design 11 software and take some flowers that I have and kind of crop them and cut them and combine them and create um, a floral design to go down the front of a sash so let's do that first we're going to go to my to the computer and start in PE Design 11 okay so I'm going to open PE Design 11, which I have kind of open right here. And this is layout and editing, and this is where we're going to do all the work today. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to take from designs I already have and cut them up and put them back together again and create this look that my granddaughter wants on her sash for her uh, cap and gown for graduation. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go into Import Patterns from File. And I have some patterns in here that um, are called Peruvian flowers. So I think I've got them under P for Peruvian. Yep. Okay. And here's the designs. And they're just really pretty artsy-like flowers. And I think the one I want to put in this is this one here. We're going to import that one. That one's pretty, except for it's too straight up and down for what we want to do. Um, and I also like this one. And I all I have to do is click on it from over here and click import, and it'll put it on the work table right here. So I want that one too. And then I also have in here, and I don't even know where I got this from, but I have it under a file called sewing quilt because because I made a sewing quilt and those of you who have been in my store have probably seen it with the sewing machine and the letters and everything and um and I want to take this flower again and use that and you can see that the sizes are all different and they're not exactly what I'm looking for but it's going to work for what I want to do it for so the first thing I need to do is I don't want these crazy leaves and all this stuff on here so I am going to hit plus and come all the way down here or zoom in all the way and I'm going to cut this guy off so in order to do that you have to have it selected and then you're going to go to the stitches stitches menu which i told you before this only appears when you have something selected so we're going to hit stitches and for some reason that's grayed out and i don't oh i know because i have the magnifying glass still so let's get the selector key and now we can go in here it's like this and it kind of changes to stitches instead of 3d i'm going to left click and left click and left click and as i click it starts to kind of lasso around this design. Left click, left click, left click. And then I'm going to double click. And that will actually cut this guy completely off from that flower. And I can hit the delete key on my keyboard. And then that's gone. And I could probably, if I wanted to, zoom in really close and even take some of this out stitch by stitch but i think it looks okay so we're going to go back to zoom all 
Now the next one we're going to do something with is this one. And to start with, I want it to be bigger. So I'm going to put my mouse over this corner and I'm going to hold my control button down. And you should, if you're doing this on your PE design, you should see a box with two zigzags in it. My mouse on my recording software does not change, but it will change when you hit control. And then when you pull on it, it will change the size. And down here where it tells you how many stitches in it, it will change the stitches. So it does um, recalculate your stitches for you. So I've got this one and I like that one and I'm going to hit my zoom button and I'm going to zoom in close and this one weird little tulip like thing I don't want. So besides I want this green part to connect to my other flower. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit my stitches stitches menu. Make sure my select key is chosen split key and then I'm going to cut this guy off. And I'm just going to do this. And now he's gone. Oh, I hit delete. And then let's go zoom back out again. And then I think what I want to do, I'm thinking this through, the, the red dot at the top, you'll notice when you put your mouse over it, it turns to like an arrow key and you can drag it around. Or you can come up here to rotate flip and say rotate right or rotate left. I like to grab it here because then I can get it exactly where I want it. And I'm going to put this guy up here. And if we use the zoom key and draw a box, we can zoom into this a little bit. And let's see. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to think about this thing. I'm going to... Go up a little bit. Let's see what would happen if we tip this a little bit this way. Move it up here. Take this one. Move it up here. That connects to that. I don't like the lime green. So I am going to come over here and zoom down. Where is the lime green? There's one right there. Let's just click off of it, then click on it. And then this up here should say change color. We're going to click on it. It says it's Floriani. I'm going to change this to Brother Embroidery. And then I'm going to choose a dark green. And then I'm going to choose this one and make immediately, as soon as I change this to brother embroidery, down here it should show me the colors that are already in the design. So that should make that the same color green. And then this one is part of this flower, which is this one right here. Let's make that the same color too. So that we don't... have a lot of different colors in there. They're all, they should all be the same. So let's see. This one. Hmm. I think what I want to do is go to list mode. So this one. Okay, that's what's going wrong. This is this color. That means this. I'm trying to figure out why it's doing this. Palette mode. This color green is at the front of that. With it says Brother Embroidery. Embroidery 534 teal green. And then this one here says Brother Embroidery 515. I want teal green. I want them to be the same color. 
There it is. That's 534 teal green now. Now they're the same color, so that should work. And then this one, Brother Embroidery. <coughs> 534 teal green. So that's the same color too. So now let's try and move this to the top. And you can do this too and move it all to the top. Those are all together and they're all at the top. This one, move to the top. And this one, move to the top. And I think I've just changed my mind again. I don't like the way this tips this way. Let's tip it this way. Sometimes, you know, when you're playing around with the software, you just got to keep moving things until you get what you're trying to get. That looks like that was made to be connected there. Okay. Now I'm going to bring that other flower in that I decided I was going to use. So let's go. Here it is right here. Let's bring it up here. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hold my control key down and I'm going to drag it up so it's bigger. And then this one I think I want to flip it horizontally and turn it this way. And then let's take this one, control D, grab it, bring it down here, flip the whole thing around the other way, up here, and then choose this one again, control D bring it down here, rotate I actually kind of like that. I think it's really pretty, except for this was the wrong color. So I'm going to choose this, and then I'm going to, let's see, this one here. Click off of it. Click onto it. We are going to make this pink. And make this I think we want to make this a turquoise and I think I want to make this a yellow I could sit here and play with this, you know, all day until I got it exactly the way I wanted it. But for the most part, I think that looks really pretty. I like it a lot. It goes a little bit out of my hoop. I have a nine and a half by 14 hoop. So what I can do is I can get my selector key, grab the whole thing like this, and then drag it in a little bit and pick it up and move it so it fits in my hoop. 
that looks pretty good. I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you another one that I did. Oh, before I do that, I want to show you. So I've got two of these flowers here. You can hit this right here, which is an optimized sewing order, and hopefully it will put all the colors together. So this one's together. This one is that um, 534 teal green, but this one is not. It, it still says Floriani on it, so I'm going to do Brother Embroidery. 534 till green so those are all together now these are together these are together all those colors just kind of sorted themselves out so they're together so i won't have so many color changes in here so that works makes that work a whole lot better but anyway i want to show you that i'm going to go into import patterns from file and i played with this a little bit earlier today trying to think of what i was going to do and um, I put them in a file that I call custom. There it is. Right here. Let's import these. And while they're selected, I'll move them over here. This one, I kind of turned them a little bit different directions. This one's down here. And I think I have three of these. One here, one here, one here. Oh, I know why I did that. It was because I wanted, if I decided to continue it and make another row, I'd have another space to do it. So there's a, two options with the same flowers. Just kind of messed around a little bit with the colors and decided what I wanted it to be. Um, it's just basically taking somebody else's design and creating your own design. And I think my granddaughter is really going to love that on her sash. Okay, so I have this black. Um, it's basically broadcloth. It is part um, polyester, probably 60% polyester and 40% cotton. If you can see... It's pretty see-through and lightweight, um, but it's black, and that's what she wants on this sash. So I think this is going to work really well. But um, I have discovered, and this, and I've told you before, I've been embroidering for 25 years, um, this new stabilizer. And it is called Fusible Woven. It's by OESD. It is a black. They also have it in a white. It is a cutaway. But it is It's like a fabric. It's almost like a interfacing and it's got an iron on on the other side that you can see and it just adds a lot of stability to the back of a lightweight cotton especially if you're going to sew it into a quilt or something so that you don't um, have to worry about pulling it off and trimming it off and it, it will just make a world of difference as far as all those puckers go that you don't want in something that you're embroidering i also use my best press and i starch the broadcloth and then I went ahead and I pressed the fusible woven on the back. You guys know the difference between ironing and pressing, right? Ironing is moving the iron back and forth. Pressing is picking it up and putting it down. So that's what I did. I pressed it so nothing has been stretched out or distorted. And then on top of all of that, I am also going to put some stitch and wash. So Stitch and Wash is by Floriani. I really like it a lot because it's very, very thin and lightweight. And it it not only tears re away really easily, but it also will, the back will wash off. Of course, with this, I'm going to line it so it doesn't make any difference if the back looks bad. But I do like any of the excess stabilizer to be gone instead of me sitting there pick, 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 trying to pull it all out. So I'm going to cut a piece of this. So now here's the back of my hoop. Here is my stitch and wash. And yes, it's smaller than my hoop, but I'm not concerned about that because I've got the other stabilizer as well. I have as much as I need. I'm going to use some 505. I like everything to stick together. Spray it on the stabilizer. And then lay my piece of black fabric with 
the fusible woven on it. Smooth all that out so there's no puckers or any bumps in it. And then I'm going to put this on. And a lot of times what I'll do is first I'll do a test hooping. So that means I'm going to hoop this to make sure it's the right size. Lift up this and tighten it really tight so I know it fits. And then I'll pick it, take it apart, smooth it out really good, put this part in, put this part in, and push. And that way I know that I have a nice taut embroidery hoop that won't pucker. And then I'm actually going to baste around it. If your machine has a basting stitch, then use it because it'll put all three of those stabilizers together and get close to your design and make it so that it can't pull in. So I'm going to do that. I still got a little bit of a bubble right there, but it's okay. All right, so let's go to the sewing machine and let's get this started. My hoop is on my sewing machine and I just wanted to show you here is my design um, that I transferred from my software into my sewing machine. And I want to add a basting stitch around here so I can baste this before I do anything else. So I just wanted to show you, if I hit edit, it's not in here. Um, you have to hit embroidery first. So now you're in the sew out mode. And then if you hit layout, it will have a picture of a flower with a basting stitch around it. Hit the basting stitch and it adds a black box right up against your design. So it'll base that out first and then it'll start the flower. And you'll notice once you go out of layout that the basting stitch goes first, even though the flower was already on there. So that works out pretty good. Um, and then another tip that I want to give you is I have red thread in this. And I probably wouldn't normally base with red thread. I can't seem to get a hold of it. There we go. Um, but sometimes when you put your foot down and you start to baste, it actually doesn't pick up the bobbin thread. And it happens on almost all of the embroidery machines I've embroidered on. It's just one of those things because it's making such big long stitches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit plus one. So here's my needle. Go plus one and it'll go up here into the corner. Then I'm going to hit needle down and needle up and I'm going to pull my bobbin thread up. I got to get a hold of it. Probably a pair of tweezers would be a good idea at this point. <laughs> and my bobbin thread is black so it's hard to see it but I didn't want any white color coming up so on this black fabric you want black bobbin thread. So, so now you see I'm holding the bobbin thread and the top thread in this much the same way that you do when you're quilting and then I'm going to hit the foot down and hit go and when it does this basting stitch it will catch that bobbin thread right away. And some of those built-in designs that you buy that have a basting stitch that based your fabric down first, they're going to do the same thing. So it's really important for you to pull that bobbin thread up. It just saves a lot of frustration afterwards. Okay, so we're in front of the Solaire sewing machine and we've gone into Design Center. And what I want to do is I want to draw a cap and gown. And I've been kind of thinking this through what I'm going to do. The first thing I want to do is I want to go into my shapes menu and I want to use this diamond. So there's the top of the cap and gown. Now we need to get the bottom part. And I, I had to think about it a little bit to try and figure out what I wanted. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this shape and bring it down to about right here. I think that's where I want it to be. Now I need to erase all this part that overlaps here. So I'm going to hit the plus sign. I'm going to hit the eraser and use the big part so that I can erase a good portion of this. I have the 4x4 four four square here. It's bugging me. So I'm going to go in here, see where it says 4x4, four four, and I'm going to change it to 9.5 by 14. Now that score is gone and I don't get, have to get confused. I'm going to move this over here and then just get as close as I can. I can erase more of it later when I get closer 
and get in here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I want to curve this part here so it goes down like this. So I'm going to hit plus again so I'm a little bit closer. And if I hit my eraser and get the tiniest eraser possible, I can take that one little notch out and I'm going to take out this part too. There. Now, this is the hard part for me anyway. You might be better at it. Um, I'm going to do free motion curve. And so I got to try and rest my arm. Hopefully, I'm not too much in the camera. And I'm going to draw a curve like that. It's not too bad. I don't think anybody will notice it once it gets filled with stitches. So now I'm going to go here. And I want to use this tool because that's a continuous line. And I can be really close and not worry about where it stops and starts. And then I'm going to draw here straight. Try and get that as parallel to this one as I possibly can. Move my red box over. Whoops, too far. Then I'm going to draw and see how it automatically connected to the last drawing so I don't have to worry about that. Then I'm going to go this way. Let's move the red box over all the way back up to here. I'm going to just tap my pen right here and it'll draw a continuous line. Now this is where I'm going to get back to doing a curve again. So we're going to leave this on a small eraser because I don't want to accidentally erase into anything. Let's erase to here. Now we're going to draw this curve again. I think we want this to be down here. Is that? That's, I think that's right. No, go back. We only want it to be about to here. I think that's better. Now, let's do that free motion again. Okay. And let's draw it. Starting here and going down. Yeah, I goofed. I made it too, too short here. But that's okay. Because I think I can do free motion to here, at least. There. Now let's zoom out. There's my cap and gown. It's a really basic little shape, but it's all I really need to give that idea of a, of a graduation cap. So now I want to fill it with color. So first thing, I don't think I want it to be outlined. So I'm going to go here. And I'm going to say, do not sew. And then just tap this. And then I'm going to go here to the fill part. Remember, the top part is always the outline. The bottom part is always the fill. So this is the fill we're going to pour. Somebody told me this was a cup, not a bucket. But it looks like a bucket to me, a paint bucket. So that's your paint bucket. We're going to hit this. And um, we're doing this on black fabric. And... I can't actually remember the color, her school colors. So we're just going to fill it with any color. It's okay. So we're going to do yellow. And then we're going to tap and tap. And there's her cap and gown. And then that's all I need because I'm going to type in class of 2023 underneath that. So when I hit next, I'm going to hit preview. And there's my cap and gown, my cap, my graduation cap. So that looks pretty good just the way it is. Um, what I might want to do, it's really too big for the sash. So, but it, the good news is that I could size it now or I can size it in the embroidery. So I'm going to go ahead and set that down. Say, okay. I probably should have saved it just in case I had to go back. Um, but if I go under edit and size, remember you can hit this. And then we can size it till it's about the size we want it for. That's a pretty good size. Then I'm going to push add. And we're going to go into here. And let's see. What should we do this in? Let's try this one. I think that one should work. I can change it later if I need to. So I'm going to push C. Let's make it a medium. And lower class, lower case. Space of set that down. 
I know that there's a return button on this and I can always go in, if I hit edit and go back in here, I can always hit return here if I wanted to, but I don't really want to. I like to keep them separate. So I'm going to, I'm going to set it down and then I'm going to add and go back into here and then let's, Let's pick this font. I like this one. Two, zero, two, three. Set. Class of 2023. I think that looks pretty good. I'm very happy with it. So I'm going to save it in the memory. Um, and I'm going to... Um, back that black fabric the same way I did when I did the flowers. Oh, by the way, I just want to show you before I finish the sash. Look how pretty these flowers came out. Aren't they beautiful? I just love them. They just sewed together so nice and you never know. I took several different ones and duplicated them and put them together. So the flowers will be on there. I'll put the fabric in there. I'll put the class of 2023 and on the other side, I'm going to put her name and um and then like i said before i'm going to kind of sneak a bible verse onto the back of it and put some fringe on it and i'll be back and i'll show you what it looks like all finished up okay so i'm back in my sewing room i have gone ahead and finished up this sash i'm feeling a little casual today it's my day off and i just didn't want to do my hair and makeup um but i did want to show you this sash and i think it came out really nice the bottom is not finished because i haven't asked my granddaughter yet whether we're going with fringe or whether we're going with a little point maybe at the bottom um, we haven't worked that out yet but i was really pleased with the way this came out i have the embroidery let me move that out of the way. I have the embroidery. I have the cap, the the cap from the cap and gown and class of 2023. Her name is down here, and her high school is right here. Um, and the Mexican colors came in really pretty. It looks really nice. If you flip her around here, she does have a nice little point that comes right down through the back. And again, I don't know whether it needs a little fringe hanging down here or just the way it is. I did, like I said before, um, sneak in a Bible verse on the back of this. And um, I almost wish I went ahead and just put it on the outside because I think it looks really nice hanging down there. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to give you hope and a future. And that's from Jeremiah 29. So, and there's a little flop, pink flower down here on the bottom just to kind of finish it up. But I did put it on the inside, mostly because I was a little concerned about this 45 degree angle. I wasn't sure exactly how it was going to come together. So once I got that all figured out, then it just naturally went on the back. So um, I'm glad I did it. It came out really nice. I, I'm hoping, my fingers crossed, she's going to absolutely love it. And I hope maybe I might have helped you a little bit with how you play with your software and then also go into Design Center and maybe create something from scratch. I had a good time. I hope you did too. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.